In this lesson, we will be covering work axes and work planes. A work axis can be utilized to help create other pieces of geometry. For example, we may use a work axis to help define the axis of rotation for another work plane, whereas we could also use it for these center axes to maybe do a circular pattern. A work plane is going to be utilized where we need to maybe draw on a specific plane, but that plane does not exist. So for the example in the file that I have open, maybe I need to go back and create a feature off on this tangency here, but obviously there's no flat plane for me to make the active sketch. So let's get started by creating a work axis first, probably the easiest of the work features to create. So we're going to click on the Work Axis tool from the Part Features panel. you also notice that I'm in the Work Features part file, which can be located in your Chapter 4 Exercise folder. So first of all, the easiest one to probably create is I'm just going to select on a cylindrical face, and that Work Axis is going to be created right in the center. You'll see that it shows up here in the browser. Another axis that I can create is you can select two points. So if I select these two points, that work axis will go through those points. So we'll come back and we'll utilize some of these work planes when we're creating some other work features here. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that one. And let's take a look at work planes. So again, we're going to create a work plane when I need to go back and create a sketch and there is no plane that exists on the part. So if I wanted to draw something, let's say, on this front face here, I would just make that the active sketch. But in this case, let's go back through some different scenarios for creating work planes. So I'm just going to select the Work Plane tool. So let's start off on what defines a plane. Well, I can start off, I can select three points will define a plane. So let's select that third point, spin the model around. Now as the model will change, or would change, let's just change the extrusion depth from 25 to 30. And you'll see that the work plane still goes through the three points that I selected. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that plane. Another method for creating a work plane would be to select two edges. So by selecting those two edges, again the plane goes right through. So let's show a little bit what we can do once I have that plane created. So in this case I'm going to make this active plane the active sketch. So this would be another technique I was talking about making a plane the active sketch. Well I can also use that plane as a terminating plane. So click on return, I'm going to extrude the cylinder, I'm going to cut the material to the plane, and when I select on the plane, always select on the outside edges. And let's change the display to wireframe, spin it around, and you can see that that cylinder is terminating on that plane. Again, if the geometry would change, it will automatically update that as well. So let's switch back to our shaded display. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the extrusion. Clean up our model a little bit. As well as I'll also delete the work plane. Another method for creating a work plane is going to be to select a plane. So let's rotate this around. So you notice I have this angled plane and I'm going to select the point. And so by selecting that endpoint of that edge, that's exactly where that work plane went through. So let's just undo. Another method for creating a work plane is to select two parallel planes. So in this case I'm going to select this outside plane, spin the model around, 
and select the back face. And when I do that, the work plane is right in the middle. So in this case, if I wanted to, I could go back again and make that the active sketch. Let's go ahead and do that. And in this case, I'm just going to draw a circle right up here. I'm going to extrude that circle. Let's use the mid-plane option. And you see that cylinder is right in the middle. I'm going to go back and modify the sketch underneath here. And let's take that from 60 to 80. And when I do, you'll notice that my extrusion is still right in the middle. I didn't have to go back and put any other parameters or anything like that in place there. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that plane. And we'll take the dependent features with it. So what I want to do next here is I want to create a plane that's going to be tangent to this face. So what I need to do is I need to select a plane that it will be tangent to. So in this case, let's again slide on down, select our work plane tool. I'm going to select the plane, and then I'm going to select the face. Now what I'm trying to do is select near the tangency point that I want, and you'll notice that the plane has been created right at that tangency. So let me undo that. Let's create another one. If I select the angle plane that I have, you can see that it works perfectly as is.